Well, my friend, I think right now the best thing you can do is run for safety. They probably have a good beat on your location, assuming the tumbleweeds were on their payroll. Make no mistake, these guys are dangerous. Well, we've all been in a dream we've wanted to wake up from, but couldn't, right? Let's just say there are people who thrive on that fear and have ways of keeping you from waking up. Exactly. What did you do to these guys anyway? Why you? Right. Where did you get the box? They must be worried about what's inside. Worried it will expose them, all the things they have done, to her and to all the other people they have hurt. I wish I knew. Even if I make it to my destination, I'm still not home. That's what it means to be an exile. My niece, Nadia, used to ask me that question all the time. Where are you going, uncle? She was the only young person who knew I was leaving. Imagine, she knew when my father didn't. I was always mad at my sister for telling her. She would ask me that when I was putting her to bed. The only thing you can tell when a person that young asks you a question like that at bedtime. I told her the truth, not the truth truth, but the truth wrapped in the blanket of a story. There's a place where the river Tigris run through Baghdad. A place called the Two-Story Bridge. When I was a kid, I would go fishing there and look out at the water and wonder where it all led. As a child, I was told that the farthest place on the earth from Baghdad is a place called Fiji. I would train my eyes on the horizon and imagine that all the water led there to the point where the sky met the earth. To my child's mind, Fiji was the place where the sky touches the earth. These people of Fiji, they must be very tolerant people to live in such a place where one has to stoop over at all times and can never stand up straight. Eventually, they resolved to leave and find a new home where the sky was farther from the earth where the panelist tree can grow high enough to be woven. So, they left this land right under the sky, leaving behind those people so old and bent that they no longer cared to stand up straight. The other Fijians gradually moved away from the edge of the world, and the sky got a little higher, and then they found a marvelous place. It was fertile and lush, with excellent weather, an orange tree for every backyard. But there was one problem. Earthquakes. Terrible earthquakes. As frequent as rains during the springtime in this country. All because the sky was still close to the earth. When there's thunder, it echoes off the roof of the sky and causes the ground to break. But the Fijians adjusted. They built their entire civilization out of rubber. Rubber houses with rubber beds that would sway during the quakes. With rubber restraints that would hold the sleeping Fijians tight while they dreamed. But Nadia didn't want a bedtime story about that. She wanted a story about good and evil. The kind of story children like. So I changed it for her to be about a Fijian princess called Nadia who finds the source of all the earthquakes. So Nadia finds a dragon hiding under the earth. 
a dragon with a splinter in its toe, whose terrible roaring causes the earth to break. Nadia slays the dragon and saves the people by uttering a magic spell. Gonothi say our tongue. Gonothi say our tongue. It's actually Greek. Rolls right off the tongue, no? Okay, that was interesting. Can you say that again? All the mirror eyes closed. Seems like it. And look, that's not the spell's only power. The card. There's a phone number on it now. Do you know what this means? I think you read... ready to make a certain phone call. Ready to put your spell to use? Good. Do you have a phone? Even better. So, here's the plan. You call them and tell them you want to sign up for a tour. Doesn't matter. A tour of the Badlands, whatever. Just something to get close enough to them. To find out what's going on. Here's the thing. If they act like they're taking you on a tour, everything is good. But if they've figured you out, they'll try to distract you while they kidnap you. Take it from me. They tell you someone you care about is in danger. But don't believe it. If everything's fine, then Everything's fine. But if someone you know is in danger, it's a trap. Get out of there. Are you ready? Dial the number. gas station on Route 90. All right, I'll pick you up in an hour. You don't have a car, do you? Just guess from your voice. So, see you in an hour. Don't worry about that. I'll be waiting for you once you land. So, it worked then? Isn't that how these things normally work in the stories of this country? Other character shows up, imparts some hard-earned wisdom, then conveniently fades away. Thanks. I think you'll be fine. You have allies all along this road, even in the cars of enemies. I've left something for you. Hey, sorry I haven't written in a while.
Hey, sorry I haven't written in a while. It took me all morning just to figure out where to buy stamps here. So, I'm sending you something from my trip, like I promised. Last week, I was at yet another barbecue. People here really enjoy their pork chops, let me tell you. There was this old-timer there, the host's father. He was talking about inflation during the war years. He ran upstairs to get something, something he was excited to show me. He comes back down with a 50 billion dinar bill. He starts talking about, at the time they printed it, inflation was so bad that in the morning it could buy one sandwich. By lunchtime, it could buy half a sandwich. It's a beautiful piece of printing, don't you think? All these O's lined up next to each other. Anyway, keep it tucked away for safekeeping. The big piece of news on my end is that yesterday, I finally tackled my fear of heights. Your humble correspondent from the Balkans went hang gliding. Yes, me. Hard to believe, I know. I wasn't gonna do it. But this tour guide guy I met talked me into it, facing my fears and all that. But then the tour guide takes me to the hill where they do the hang gliding, and they're talking about the most crazy thing that happened the week before. You're not going to believe this. It's a tandem dive, so they have you strapped in with an instructor, right? Well, last week they strapped someone in, but the instructor forgot to strap himself in securely. They go running off the cliff, and the instructor tumbles down the hill. The instructor was okay, just some bruises. But now the other person is stuck up in the air, with no idea how to fly the thing. Everyone on the ground is freaking out, yelling instructions up in the air about what to do. The girl said later that once she got over the initial terror, it was like she'd been doing this, been flying a hang glider all her life. It must have been exhilarating, conquering that first wave of fear. And once you're up there, it is amazing. The best thing is that you look down and there are these tiny white cotton ball things on the ground. And then you realize they're sheep. It's not so hard to steer either, once you get the hang of it. Today, when I was looking for stamps, I bought one of those inspirational refrigerator magnets in a tourist shop. It says, do one thing every day that scares you. I know you think this kind of thing is cheesy, but I actually think it's profound. I hope we can do stuff like this on our road trip together. Can we? Sometimes I hate how we live in Seattle just sitting around in our own heads all the time. I feel like it's the reason we've been arguing more lately before I left. If you don't shake the fear out of your system on a regular basis, it curdles up into anger. I don't want to be angry. Time for your idealistic correspondent to sign up. I'm so used to writing emails that it hurts my hand to write a real letter now. How sad is that? But I promise to write more often. And what about you? I don't expect a real letter, but an email would be great. How is everything going? How did it go with that California assignment? The thing about uh, grape farmers? That was this week, right? I miss you. I feel a little nervous about coming back home to you, but a little nervousness is nothing to worry about. That's what I've learned here. Fear is the mind killer. Love you. Jeez, there you are. Nice of you to grace us with your presence. I've been looking all over for you. You were supposed to be waiting by the post office, remember?
Look, we've all got a lot on our minds since the accident. I don't have time to drive all over Mankato looking for you. Barely gotten any sleep since it happened. Duh. It. The accident, right? Craig. Sure, it's only because of him that I'm picking you up. Honestly, some of us weren't so happy about the idea of having you around in the hospital. But uh, he made a good case for you in that altruistic way of his. Said, we're not here to pass judgment. What? Hang on. Shut up. This isn't just any kind of phone call. Uh, yes. No. I, I know. No, he turned up eventually. Yeah, he's sitting right here. Do you, do you want to talk to him? Should I put him on live with you? No, I didn't think so. Yes. Okay, I'll wait then. What? It's called a headset. It's a good way to not wreck your car while you're using a phone. Something I would think you'd be very invested in at this point. Look, it was an accident, I know. Sorry. But you just don't pull a phone out of someone's hand while they're behind the wheel. You should have known better. that locked box. If you do, roll down the window as a sign. 14 looks good until you reach the exit at 13 south. A minor fender bender. Hey, do you mind? I'm trying to listen to this. Has traffic backed up a mile or so. Also, some reports have come in up. It's okay. You can close it now. No point in making him angry over nothing. Okay, good. You can't let these guys get a hold of that box. He may even have the key on him, this guy. They're taking you to her, but you have to be careful. You need to figure out how much they know. To the hospital. Is this funny to you? Because it's not to me. Do you really want to go there? You really want to talk about this? Now? Of all moments? Fine. Listen, I know that she wasn't honest with you, that she couldn't bring herself to be straightforward about her feelings. I know it hurt you, man, but you two had been growing apart for a while. In the end, she just wanted to be with someone, someone more dedicated. That's the direction she was growing in. It didn't happen overnight, but the trip to Europe and meeting Craig, yeah, that was a big part of it. Fine, whatever. Yes, we're all working against you. Are you satisfied now? Because this is hardly the time to bring your hurt feelings out onto the stage. Can I tell you something? You're a great photographer. I mean, nobody doubts that, man. But at some point, if people keep screwing you over, keep betraying you, at a certain point, if everywhere you go, people keep being assholes to you, well, guess what? Maybe you're the asshole. The radio? Sure, go ahead. Copernicus, there's no time to lose. You have to act quickly now, before he puts that helmet on again. Use this bell. Stop him. Look, I don't mean to be too hard on you. I know you've had a rough 24 hours, but we all have. I mean, she's my sister after all. He's lying. Use this bell. 
stop him. Hang on again. I, I gotta get this. Yeah, I'm here. We'll be there in just a few minutes. Yeah, he tried it just like we expected. No, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I agree. It's time to call his bluff. Step on the brake. Stop him. Do it. Step on the brake. Okay, uh, about to hit the exit. We got him. Hook, line, and sinker. Okay, uh, about to hit the exit. We got him. Hook, line, and sinker. Okay, uh, about to hit the exit. We got him. Hook, line, and sinker. Visiting hours are until 7, so yes, you'll get a chance to see her. She thinks you've caused some kind of accident. That was some argument. You two came by my house, yes? See, that's, that's my silo. There in the background. So, I'm sending you something from my... Tr Visiting hours are until 7, so yes, you'll get a chance to see her. Visiting hours are until 7, so yes. She thinks you've caused some kind of accident. I'm going away for two months. I'll be back before you know it. Here's a security deposit. I wasn't going to do it, but this tour guide guy I met talked me into it. So, I'm sending you something from my trip, like I promised. You two came by my house, yes? See, that's... that's my silo. There in the background. That was some argument. That was some argument. Some argument. You two came by my house, yes? See, that's that's my silo. There in the background. So, I'm sending you something from my trip, like I promised. I wasn't gonna do it. So, I'm sending you something from my trip, like I promised. I wasn't gonna do it. But this tour guide guy I met talked me into it. So, I'm sending you something from my trip, like I promised. So, I'm sending you something from my tr So, I'm sending you something from my tr So, I'm sending you something from my tr So, I'm sending you something from 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 my trip. So, I'm sending you something from my trip. So, I'm sending you something from So, I'm I wasn't going to do it. But this tour guide guy I'm so I'm sending you something 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 so I'm sending so I'm sending you something from my so I'm sending you something from so I'm sending you something from my so I'm sending you something from I'm going away for two months I'll be back before here's a security deposit I wasn't gonna do it but this tour guide guy I met talked me into it. So, I'm sending you something from my trip, like I promised.
you two came by my house. Yes, see, that's that's my silo there in the background. She thinks you've caused some kind of accident. It's great, right? I'll send you something special from Europe to put inside. It's a beautiful piece of printing, don't you think? All these O's lined up next to each other. The argument back at the diner, maybe there was something missing for her. Find the man with many eyes. They're the ones who did this to me. He has ten eyes. He wears them around his wrist, like a bracelet. From this man. Oh, please. I think he flew into the bottle on purpose. What are you, the public defender to all things living? Fireflies can't talk. Someone has to speak up for him. If the six tiny mittens don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> yeah, I'll set it free in a minute. I just think this light is incredible. Let's keep him as our pet. Now he's being cruel. I think I'll always remember this. This is one of those nights, right? One of what nights? We'll always have this. If you ever get to a point where you feel like you've lost me, all you have to do is find your way back to here and sit down beside me. <laughs> I hope the grass isn't so wet next time. I'm serious. Write a note to your future self and put it in this bottle. If there's ever a point where things have gotten totally screwed up between us, that moment isn't real. This one is. All you have to do is find your way back to me. What if I can't find the way? That's why I've made you this beacon. A bottle with a green light to show you the way. Sense of direction isn't exactly your strong suit, Copernicus. Let's make a pact. With this honorable firefly as witness. I promise my screwed up future self won't mess this up for us. I don't know. My future self can be a real jerk. Mine too. We're going to make mistakes. Hurt each other. Everyone does it. So, time traveler, what news, what wisdom do you bring from the future? That it's never too late. That any mistake can be fixed. Good. If that's what you believe. <laughs> 